and a very warm good morning to all our viewers on Doordarshan Sports as we bring you the final day of the ongoing Tokyo Olympics 2020. I'm Sakshi Mandwal and well friends as we finally come to the end of the mega sporting event, a few of the events still remaining for the last day. We were just watching the men's marathon finals in which Kenya's Kipchoge finished off with the timing of 2 hours 8 minutes and 38 seconds bringing the gold for his country with Netherlands and Belgium finishing on the second and third spots grabbing the silver and bronze respectively. I am joined in the studio with my dear friend Arjun Chaudhary. Good morning Arjun. Good morning, uh, Sakshi, and a very good morning to all of you as on Doordarshan Sports as we bring you uh, live coverage of the men's marathon, the gold, silver, and bronze. And just to uh, recorrect as to what the standings are, the Kenyans once again dominating uh, the 40 kilometers or 26.2 miles uh, of the men's marathon distance with Iluid Kipchoge of uh, Kenya clocking 2 hours 8 minutes and 38 seconds as Sakshi just mentioned but the silver also going to a Kenyan El Chirono but the surprise package has been the bronze medal won by the Belgian B. Abdi and in fourth place is another Kenyan A. Kiproto and what's happened is in the last stretch uh, uh, there was obviously Abdi who uh, made that effort and beat uh, Kiproto for the bronze medal otherwise it was a given that the gold silver and bronze would go to the east african runners from kenya and the official world record is also held by eluid kipchoge uh, uh, the berlin marathon in 2018 where he clocked two hours one minute and 39 seconds and he actually did better than that but it's not the official world record in austria in october 2019 uh, where he clocked one hour 59 minutes and 40 seconds so tremendous performance by the Kenyans the three runners obviously acting as rotating pacemakers to ensure that they keep in the lead and they also clock uh, the best possible time but unfortunately for the Kenyans the bronze medal going to be up deep of Belgium otherwise the gold and silver was assured for the Kenyans with Eluit Kipchoge in gold and El Chirono of Kenya winning the silver medal unfortunately a kiproto was in fourth place and not winning the bronze medal in this men's marathon final and yes today is the final day of the olympic uh, games uh, sakshi there's also plenty of action that we saw yesterday in women's uh, marathon and once again it's a kenyan dominating yes. uh, the race as well so kenya has a predominance when it comes to marathon in this particular athletic event. Of course, in general also, Arjun, if you do look at it, Kenya is a country that has always been known to dominate all kinds of athletic events, especially when we look at track events. But let's now talk about how yesterday turned out for Team India. A big, big day and the much-awaited gold medal finally coming for Indians in the tournament with Neera Chopra bagging that in the men's javelin throw finals clearly coming out the boy from Panipat Haryana the 23 year old bringing us the first gold medal in the tournament and also the first gold medal in athletics in Olympics when it comes at Indian representation in athletics the goal goes to Neera Chopra then we had silver which started the tournament off of course for us with the Mirabai Chanu in weightlifting getting us the silver in the first day of Tokyo Olympics 2020 another silver coming away thanks to Ravi Kumar Dahiya in wrestling showing very strong grit and determination and getting us that silver though he was disappointed because he wanted the gold and that is what he was looking out for but a big achievement out there for Ravi Kumar Daya. PV Sindhu getting us the bronze in badminton. Men's hockey team, how can we forget because hockey has had a stupendous run so far in the tournament in Tokyo Olympics this year because men's hockey team went on to win the bronze after 41 years and not just that also let's talk about the women's hockey team as to how good a performance theirs was also. We'll talk about that in detail in a little while. Moving on to the other medal that Indians got was lovely Nabor Gohain, the Assamese girl uh, who was able to get us uh, the bronze in boxing and finally we had Bajrang Punia yesterday getting us the bronze in wrestling. With that we have the medal tally standing at 7 medals, 1 gold, 2 silver and 
four bronze archer. Yes, Sakshi, and just looking at that uh, once again, Bajan Punia won the bronze uh, medal in the 86 kilogram mm -hmm. weight category for the wrestling bouts. And you know, you had the semi final uh, losers uh, also playing mm -hmm. against uh, the Weber Charge mm -hmm. losers at that point in time. And he managed to come out with a bronze medal yesterday. And the key winner, of course, being Neeraj Chopra. Mm -hmm. winning the gold medal in the javelin mm -hmm. throw with a throw of 87.58 meters beating the competition despite the competition actually holding the world record in javelin throw so he showed tremendous courage and temperament he topped the pool a qualified for the finals and ensured that he kept up his performance the national record is little more than 88 meters for Neera chopra he was close to it but surprisingly the other competition was not able to go beyond uh, the 87.58 that Neera Chopra set at Tokyo yesterday. And a tremendous achievement by this athlete who has been consistent throughout, especially this season. His personal best has been this season and then winning the gold medal yesterday. And Arjun, what was even more re remarkable to notice and see was that when the other athletes came up and he was just having interaction with his other contenders or competitors in the tournament, uh, one of the contenders asked him, that, how do you feel, mate? And he said, oh, of course, I feel very happy. I'm very, very happy. Just three words he said, I'm happy. I am very, very happy. That was Neera Chopra for you yesterday and giving us Indians a population of 1.3 billion people a moment to finally witness the moment that gives us all goosebumps, which was, of course, to see the national anthem play there in Tokyo, Japan. A moment that we had all been waiting for came alive through this 23-year-old boy in from Panipat, Haryana, the boy who bought us the gold in Asian Games and Commonwealth Games in 2018 and who had dreamt of bringing the country the gold in Tokyo Olympics 2020 was able to live this dream and not just live it but also make it come true not just for himself but also for all the Indians out there Arjun. Well Sakshi I certainly love the way you call Neera Chopra a boy he's obviously mm. a subedar with the defense yes. uh, forces mm. and I'm sure his career will progress mm. after this gold medal win mm. in the javelin throw yes. which is a field event mm. in athletics at mm. the Tokyo Olympics 2020. Mm. He had a throw of 87.58 uh, the best of six attempts, not best of three in the finals. Mm. And uh, it did match uh, the national record he had set. But like I said earlier, it was uh, surprising that the competition could not improve upon their own uh, personal attempts. And Neera Chopra held on to his personal best and ensured a gold medal for India. The first goal in track and field, especially in the field event. And the last time India won a goal individually was by Abhinav Bindra in 2008, mm. which was a 10 meters mm. air rifle event. And Shooting. then replicating that performance in the individual javelin throw for men's, mm. Neera Chopra has done the country proud. And it's not just a question of the distance that you throw. Uh, we saw the tremendous uh, effort that Neera Chopra put into his javelin throw when he was sprinting down the runway uh, and ensuring that you know, he was able to give his best in every attempt. But more importantly, the temperament and courage he showed in the face of competition. We saw other uh, throwing events where athletes were cowed down by the big event. And there were also obviously circumstances of rain and the runway being affected with uh, puddles of water. But Neera Chopra was not affected by that. And that is a mark of a true grit athlete. And that is what Neera Chopra showed when he won the gold medal for India, the first so far, and if you look at the overall medals tally, we have won seven medals, which includes one gold, two silvers, and three bronze uh, medals. And I hope I have not missed out on another medal there in my account, because it's not amounting to seven. Uh, there oh, are four bronze, bronze actually, medals, yes. because Bajrang Punia hmm. also won hmm. his bronze medal yesterday in the wrestling event, beating the earlier record of six. Yes, of course, and since Arjun just now mentioned about Bajrang Punia, let's come down to the bout of Bajrang Punia, where Bajrang Punia won us the bronze medal yesterday against Kazakhstan's We Dalit. have Mirabai Chanu on the screen right yes. now, and she won the silver medal mm. with a total lift of 202 mm. uh, kilograms with a snatch and clean and jerk, and then snatch, uh, which is the more difficult of the weight lifts, uh, she uh, lifted 87 kilograms, and this uh, athlete, Mirabai uh, Chanu from the Northeast, winning the silver medal on day one, setting the tone for the remaining six medals one later. 
Yes, of course. And then Ravi Kumar Daya also bringing us the silver in wrestling, where he won the India's first Olympic wrestling silver after nine years. The man showed a display of grit and determination. Let's also not forget that the day previous he had been beat by his opponent, but that even couldn't take down his determination to go ahead and play for India. And all he thought was about getting the gold, but had to make do with silver. No lesser feat achieved by the wrestler himself and Ravi Kumar Daya out there bringing us the silver, a moment of proud for the country, the second silver in fact. It was a 57 kilogram weight category that Ravi Kumar Daya won the silver medal and he was also injured during his semi-final bout but in that bout itself he had pinned his opponent which is the equivalent of a knockout in boxing. So that is a performance we saw from Ravi Kumar Bhaiya when he went into the final. Obviously, uh, there were those who were upset with the injury caused during the semi-final bout uh, and that obviously played a role in him losing the final, uh, the gold medal. And now we have Lavina Borgohain from uh, Assam who won uh, the bronze medal in the welterweight category which is between 64 and 69 kilogram uh, weight. And the difference is that uh, as opposed to wrestling, a losing semi-finalist will have to uh, refight their bouts in order to fight for the bronze medal match. But in boxing, the losing semi-finalist is assured of a bronze medal. And Lavnina Borgohain, despite showing tremendous potential in the earlier bouts, unfortunately lost the semi-final bout by 0-5. And this girl from Assam won the bronze medal for India. Yes, and that was Lavnina Borgohain being applauded also by the Prime Minister of the country, representing the country from a state uh, from Assam for the first time on an international level. Moving on to the next medal that came to, into our pocket this year at Tokyo Olympics 2020 was PV Sindhu in badminton when she became the first Indian woman to win two Olympic medals and that's a big achievement. Let's also not forget that the moment when she won bronze, we had her, she went on to defeat China's He Bing Zhou to win the bronze in badminton that day and it was a moment very well lived because she was able to defeat her opponent in just 30 minutes and that game clearly finished off from there. Uh, that match coming to an end with a reading of 21 uh, I'll just get you the stats exactly what the reading was. It's in 21, fact, 13, 21, 21, yes, 15, 21 15, it's great yes. game. So she won the bronze uh, medal. She couldn't replicate her performance at the Rio Games where she won the silver medal after winning the first game and then losing the remaining two in the final. Uh, but uh, she did quite well to repeat her performance here. In men's hockey, uh, India defeating Germany by 5-4 for the bronze medal. And this is a victory. After 41 years, the last time India won was in 1980 and that was a team gold medal. The first of seven before Abhinav Bindra won the eighth gold medal for India in the 10 meters air rifle event. Yes, and that was a big moment in fact, not just men's hockey, but women's hockey also has created history. And then finally, we had Bajrang Punia yesterday in wrestling getting us the seventh medal uh, in Olympics for India by defeating his opponent if on basis of technical points or where we saw 8-0 was the exact count and Bajran Punia clearly leading that bout by getting a lead of 2-0 and then in the last three minutes also we saw Bajran Punia taking the lead further and increasing it to 8-0 by six points and on the basis of technical superiority he was awarded that bout to be awarded the bronze. And Aditya Ashok I'm sure with age on her side will do tremendously well at the next Olympics as well. Let's not forget the other girl, Dagar, who was mm -hmm. uh, accompanied by her mother because uh, she is uh, uh, handicapped in terms of not being able to hear clearly. And uh, hers was also a tremendous uh, achievement, even though she was nowhere in the standings. But uh, because of the stiff competition, the shots were above par and she could not make it in the top five. Uh, in fact, uh, she was mm. well behind in the standings, but it was Aditya Ashok who really stood out and unfortunately missed out on that bronze medal in the women's uh, stroke play golf. Mm. Yes, of course, Arjuna. And at the end of the day, if you look at how Tokyo Olympics 2020 went, you can also see as we bring to you on the screen all our bronze medalists. We had the four bronze medalists out there. PV Sindhu, uh, lovely Naborgohen. Along with that, we had Bajrang Punia for you bringing us. And of course, then we had the Indian hockey team also, men's hockey team. And when we look about, we talk about the silver. Well, it started off with Mirabai Chanu in weightlifting on the first day and moved on 
further ahead with Ravi Kumar Dahiya. And finally, the gold coming in our kitty yesterday with Neera Chopra getting us the much-awaited medal. And this tournament not finishing off without India getting any gold. But thankfully, we got the best of the lot because not only did Neera Chopra start his journey in Olympics and athletics with a gold, but also opened up the mark for athletics, when we look at the Indian contingent or Indian athletes representing India in Olympics directly with a goal for the first time, we couldn't have asked for a better finish as a nation to Tokyo Olympics 2020. And Arjun, I would definitely come to you since we have come to the end of this tournament now. How do you think or how do you look at the performance of the Indian players this time? Well, uh, Sakshi, I think you made a very good point there. In 2012 London Olympics, we had six uh, medals to our credit but it's not just a number mm -hmm. or the quantum of medals in your tally which is important over here in the Tokyo Olympics it was a broad based performance mm -hmm. remember we had a bronze medal in men's hockey mm -hmm. which is a team sport yes. and the remaining six medals were across the board individual events and then we had uh, also the performance by Aditya Ashok in golf mm -hmm. where she stood fourth so we had medals in boxing we had medals in wrestling we had medals in track and field the field event of javelin throw by neeraj chopra we had medals in weight lifting and it has been so broad based uh, as far as our medal tally performance is concerned that i'm sure that those who appraise and assess our sporting performance professionally by the ministry of sports and youth affairs they will now take the next step they already have uh, sending uh, steroid free athletes to the Tokyo Olympics and who had qualified for the events back home. Uh, they are the ones who performed. There was obviously uh, the encouragement given by Prime Minister Narendra Modi before they hit Tokyo and he also interacted with them after they won. And even when they were the losing semi finalists or they just lost a round, he was out there to encourage them, and that is something that the athletes look for. They not, not only look for adulation from the general public, they're getting that from the media, but when they see the key decision makers of the country taking a personal, a professional interest in their performance, encouraging them, you will certainly see the results. And that's what we have seen right now. Seven medals yes, Arjun, versus fact, six at the London Olympics. Yes, I'm sorry also to just have intervened over there because we would also like to update all our viewers that on the screens right now, you can see that our sole, solo gold medal that came in our pocket was yesterday by Neera Chopra in uh, men's javelin throw finals. And also we had Mirabai Chanu bringing us the silver. And along with that, Ravi Kumar Daya bringing us the silver. The two men and one woman taking the but rather breaking the gold and silver for the nation and the fro bronze medals which we've already updated you about uh, also came into a kitty taking the count of the medal tally for india up to a spot of seven medals now if you to look at how when we, when I just asked arjun in fact you were talking again you told our viewers about how steps will be taken by the government and the federations and they are being taken to send players who are of course uh, drug free at the same time and let's also talk about one angle as to how the performance of the players this season Season has been keeping the medals apart. We saw a lot of players moving on or reaching the semis where we had the Indian women's hockey team also giving a very, very good performance. Yes, we couldn't win that medal out there, but there is no taking away the fact that the Indian women's hockey team put up a very good fight and the fact that we were able to reach the semi-finals of the Olympics for the first time in the history of Olympics in itself is a very big achievement. So when we look at the performances of the players and the athletes who were able to finish up to the semi-final rounds or reach the semi-final rounds, that in itself shows that how far our players and sports and different events and players representing different sports in Olympics are also coming and how long a distance have we actually covered to show that there has been growth, there has been a change in the fitness of the players and of course all of that has been for the better. So when we look at 2024 Paris Olympics, we are definitely and hopefully we should be eyeing more medals and more importantly looking at the fitness of players in, across different genres and sports improving to help us reach the podium finish even a step further now from here on. It's a double for the United States because the men's basketball team has also won the gold with France winning the silver. And just looking at the medal tally, uh, both China and the US are neck and neck in terms of the gold medal wins uh, with uh, the United States. Before this win had 36 gold medals and China has 
38, even though the aggregate metals, uh, it is the US, uh, which is uh, in at the top with 108, and it should be 109 by now. And in third place is Japan. That's likely to change with the remaining events uh, today. I'm your host, uh, Arjun, giving you the updates of the Tokyo Olympics. And with me is my lovely co-anchor, Sakshi. Thank you so much, Arjun, and a very warm good morning to all the viewers who are joining in right now. Well, as Arjun was just telling you, looking at how the medals tally is placed right now, China, of course, on top with a maximum of 38 gold so far, with USA on the second spot with the 36 gold and Japan on third with 27 golds. As we do know that this is the last day of the ongoing Tokyo Olympics 2020. What we're looking at as what we're looking at is just a few more hours of uh, live events. Of course in which there is no Indian representation now because all the Indian events finished off yesterday. But today we are having the major medal games to finish off the day. And in the second half of the day, you shall also be witnessing the closing ceremony of the Tokyo Olympics 2020 unfold in front of you. Before that happens, of course, to give you an idea as to how the lineup of the events today has been, we had the men's marathon finals in athletics to start off the day today in which Kenya finished at the first spot. Uh, Kipoji, Kipchoge, apologies, uh, from Kenya clocked a timing of 2 hours 08.38 seconds uh, while Netherlands came second. The person, the athlete representing Netherlands was Abdi Nayai. Uh, clocking a timing of 2 hours 9 minutes and 58 seconds while Belgium finished on the third spot. So given this, we also saw Arjun when we were talking about this in the morning uh, about of course uh, marathon, men's marathons finals in that we did talk about also how Kenya has a legacy or a history of all, always producing athletes and of course people who have been because it's a part of their culture. Just to bring to the knowledge and uh, of our viewers of you also that the person who got the goal gold medal today which is Kip Chuge also has a world record of 2 hours 1 minute 0.39 seconds which he clocked on 16 September 2018 but today when he went on to win the gold in the men's marathons finals he was unable to break his own record. This is what we were talking about uh, of course men's marathon finals and before I move on to the other events of the day, I would want Arjun to also just throw a little bit of light on the interaction that we were having the conversation earlier about how Kenya has a legacy about producing athletes from their uh, place because they of course go way back in time when you were talking about how all of this started for Kenya and the athletes. Well, we were talking earlier about uh, trying to find out who had won the gold, silver and bronze mm -hmm. and at that point in time one had assumed that uh, the trio from Kenya had won the gold, silver and bronze and possibly mm. the bronze medal which was uh, won by A. Abdi. He's from mm. Somalia mm. and has acquired the citizenship of Belgium. So he won mm. the bronze medal. Mm. But it was a silver which was in doubt and it was A. Nagai as my co-anchor just read from Netherlands who mm. won the silver medal in this uh, marathon which is 40 kilometers or 26.2 miles uh, which E. Kipoje mm. actually won. Uh, he is also the world record holder that you were notified earlier, but he was short of the world record by a good seven minutes. Uh, and another reason could be, uh, Sakshi, is that mm. the humid conditions mm. in Tokyo right mm. now and Novak Djokovic, mm. who was ousted from the Tokyo Olympics, had in fact commented upon how oppressive the conditions are mm. outside for mm. those who are not from Tokyo. Mm. So that's another factor. Coming back to the Kenyan legacy of mm. producing marathon or long distance runners that's because of the conditions back home mm. and they live in an altitude mm. where the oxygen supply is limited so as a result uh, biologically they're able to develop larger lungs by which they're able to work it and be able to run in uh, those conditions where it's low lying so that's an advantage for them and of course genetics uh, plays a major role as uh, well you find the Kenyan runners mm. being exceptionally tall mm. with long legs mm. and being able to cover long distances in a relatively short period of time so that's mm. a legacy as far as uh, Kenya is concerned in our athletics also in the steeplechase the 3000 meters uh, steeplechase Savle had also proved himself to be quite good uh, at the Tokyo Olympics. He had matched his national record timings, but he was not able uh, to make it to the podium. But as far as field is concerned, we of course had Neera Chopra hmm. with that gold medal with <laughs> the, in the discus uh, throw event, uh, which really lit up uh, the occasion for India. And that was celebrated all across uh, yesterday. And today, 
we have seven medals as a result of that win. So coming back to the marathon and the legacy that marathon has, it has a legacy also in ancient Greece and mm -hmm. Olympia where uh, you have uh, the Temple of Oracle and, you know, the great legacy of the ancient Olympic Games in 776 BC. And from there onwards, from the running sports, from the contact sports of wrestling, boxing, which actually carried forward into the modern Olympics, mm -hmm. which is why we have this today. And Pierre de Coubertin, who is known as the father of the Olympics, started this in 1896. And this legacy was not discontinued because you have the COVID pandemic. In fact, it was deferred mm -hmm. from 2020 to 2021, even though we call it the Tokyo Olympics 2020. But the spirit of the Olympic Games has not been lost. All the member nations have competed. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, the spectators are not allowed to attend mm -hmm. uh, so that there's no transmission of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, the occasion has not been lost. Mm -hmm. The Tokyo Olympics is coming to an end today. Mm -hmm. And that is heartwarming for the mm. spirit not only of the athletes mm. but of the organizers at Tokyo as well. Yes, and that's in fact very beautifully put, Arjun, because when we talk about the spirit not being lost, uh, let's not forget that the Tokyo Olympics were supposed to be organized last year, but given the pandemic, they had to be, in fact, postponed. And they were not cancelled, which is, in fact, for the first time that Olympics have not been called off, but rather got postponed to another year, which is why we choose to stick to calling them Tokyo Olympics 2020. And as Arjun rightly mentioned, that the spirit of the game still survives and it has to live which is why the if we talk about tokyo olympics we also have the hashtag united by emotion because that is what sports does it brings people uh, people together it brings countries together it brings nations together and at the end of the day sports has that spirit to uplift a person to uplift a community to uplift a nation together and bring about unity across the globe and that is what we witnessed this year also amidst all the tough defying conditions i mean amidst all the tough conditions we saw the players and the athletes and the nations defy all odds and yet Tokyo Olympics was organized and we came together as a channel also as a part of the Olympics to bring the coverage right to your doorsteps in your houses via the medium of television of course now if you're talking about uh, events that happened in the course of the day Arjun when it started off of course with uh, the men's marathons finals we also moved on to seeing volleyball transpire in which we had the bronze medal match happening today and of course when we talk about the bronze medal match it was between Republic of Korea versus Serbia and Serbia outrightedly dominated Republic of Korea 3-0 with the first session being of course 18-25, second one being 15-25 and third one being 15-25 which at the end resulted in a total of just 48 points for Republic of Korea while we saw Serbia garnishing a total of 75 points and as a result it was an outright defeat that Republic of Korea faced and Serbia was able to get the bronze for themselves in volleyball finals today Arjun. Yes and that was a very interesting match as well with uh, Serbia dominating uh, all three games against South Korea winning the bronze medal but the key match to watch in uh, volleyball would be the gold medal match and that is between Brazil and the United States of America shortly mm -hmm. and if the US wins that they will certainly be at par with China in terms of the number of gold medals won because China has won 38 gold medals and right now the United States has won 37, especially after their basketball women's uh, win uh, mm -hmm. against Japan that we showed you, where they won by 90 to 75 in folk waters. So uh, the United States uh, once again dominating the Olympic Games. China has been a revelation once again from the Beijing Olympics onwards. And we also have Japan in third place so with the 27 gold medals that Sakshi had mentioned earlier. And 12 bronze, uh, 12 silvers and 17 bronze, taking the tally to 56 and I'm sure that will also change because Japan was a losing mm -hmm. finalist in the basketball so that would make their silver medals to 13 and the total tally to 57 so these are the top three as far as the medals tally is concerned India with seven uh, medals with one gold two silvers and four bronze medals is at the 47th position and what's heartening and what Sakshi was trying to say earlier is that the spirit of the Olympics extends not only to individual wins, uh, but also to team wins. And that's what we saw in the team sport of hockey. Both men and women, although we won the bronze medal uh, in uh, men's hockey against Germany, 
tremendous final, uh, sem uh, the bronze medal match of 5-4. But the women also held themselves very well, where they lost to Argentina, unfortunately, by three goals to two, which was very hard fought. And Argentina, of course, uh, became the top team. Uh, in the competition. So, mm -hmm. as far as the spirit of the Olympics is concerned and the broad-based achievement we have had so far, it has been tremendous for India. Yes, of course, and since we've been talking about the medal tally, you have it right there on the screens once again for all you people. United States on number one spot with 39 gold, while China is in the second spot with 38 gold medals. Japan is in the third spot with 27, and Great Britain is on the fourth spot with 21 gold. And we see, uh, of course, India still lagging way behind. 47 is where we stand on the middle tally with one gold, two silver and four bronze medals. A total of seven medals coming in our kitty this time and it's also time that as we have been doing that the players, the athletes who have gone on to win the medals for the nation and have made us proud, we applaud them, we back them and of course we also salute the hard work, the dedication and the sincerity that they put into the sport into the Olympics, into their event to get us that goal. And since we're talking about medals, and since I just mentioned gold, how can we forget Neera Chopra that Arjun and all of us have been talking about? 23-year-old Neera Chopra from Panipat, Haryana, who got us the gold yesterday in men's javelin throw finals, clocking a timing of approximately 87.5. Five eight meters. If I'm not well, mistaken, well, I think in your enthusiasm, Sakshi, yes. yeah. it's a throw yes. of 87.58 yes. meters. Five but yes, got I got the figure, figure right. Yes, absolutely yes. right. It yes. was in the second attempt and the best of six throws, yes. if I'm yes. correct, uh, Sakshi. Yes. And he beat the much more favoured uh, opponents mm. uh, from uh, Germany, Vetter. Mm who has a world record yeah. of almost 98 meters, which he mm. couldn't match, yes. despite being in the finals. Mm. Uh, for some reason, that is unexplained. And uh, the silver for the javelin throw went to Jakub mm. of Czechs Czechoslovakia mm. and Viteslav also mm. of Czechoslovakia. So it was a global competition. And Neera Chopra, with mm. his uh, courage and more importantly, <laughs> his temperament, he's mm. able to produce his national record best mm. at any given event, whether it's a national event or an international event and that's what makes Neera Chopra special. It's not just the gold medal, that's the outcome of his temperament. But really, it is a spirit and the way he conducts himself that I'm sure would be a model for the rest of the athletes in the next Olympics as well. Yes, of course, and since we were talking about the medals, here's also a quick uh, mention of the fact that apart from the players and the athletes who went on to get us the medals, let's also talk about the other athletes and players, Arjun, who did not get us the medals but were able to reach the semi-finals. The first thing that comes to my mind, of course, is the Indian women's hockey team, that despite the fact that we lost to Great Britain out there, we still held our ground and we were able to sail high because this was the first time that, remember, Indian women's hockey team qualified for the semi semi-finals ever in Olympics and even though we lost the bronze medal play play out game also yet the way our girls fought it showed caliber it showed grit it showed determination it showed girls who knew their game who knew what they were doing and this is a very different side to what we would have expected because I'm sure when the Indian women's hockey team started Olympics nobody expected them to reach the semi-finals but the kind of performance and display they showed is commendable and applaudable. Yes, Sakshi, and the women had conducted themselves extremely well. If you look at the beginning of the Olympic uh, Games with Mirabai Chanu on day one, winning a silver in the 49 kilogram weightlifting uh, class with a total lift of 202 kilograms. And she also matched her national record in the snatch and clean and jerk, which is what makes it all the more special. But just coming back to hockey, as uh, Sakshi had cited uh, earlier, uh, remember the it's a team sport. But there were some outstanding performers. And let's not forget Gurjeet Kaur because her two drag flicks uh, converting the penalty corner in that crucial semi-final mm -hmm. ensured that we were in the running for a bronze medal. And Vandana Kataria was the third scorer. And Gurjeet Kaur was also responsible for the win against Australia. Mm -hmm. So that's another factor to, be, uh, to remember that mm -hmm. there are star performers within the team. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, she was not the recipient of the bronze medal because as a team... India lost that match to Argentina, but I'm sure the next Olympics in Paris is going to be something even more yes. special if we can use this as a foundation with seven medals for the next Olympics, Sakshi. Mm -hmm.